Okay, Professor Sir George Bain, former head of Warwick Business School, London Business School, Queen's University Belfast, welcome. Thank you. So, tell us, how did you first become a business school dean? Well, largely by accident. Uh, I'd spent my whole life, uh, professional life, uh, not studying business so much as studying uh, trade unions, industrial conflict, and that sort of thing. And Warwick, as you well know, was very strong in this area, still is very strong in this area. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the early 80s, the business school at Warwick um, uh, was not flourishing for a whole variety uh, of reasons. Uh, I think largely the absence of professorial uh, leadership and uh, the vice chancellor and the registrar approached me and asked me if I would think of becoming the chair of the school. Uh, more importantly, since uh, it was an elected position, uh, the younger staff of the school also approached me. There was an election. I became the chairman, as it was then called, uh, of Warwick Business School. In fact, it wasn't even called Warwick Business School, it was the School of Industrial and Business Studies. Okay, thank you. And once in the roles, how, how do you formulate and implement strategy as a dean? Well, uh, I suppose in an academic way would be the answer to that, in the sense that I used to always tell my students, I imagine as most uh, tutors do, that you don't really know anything about a subject until you write an essay about it and you should always collect your thoughts. And uh, in all of the positions that I've held, both at Warwick, at London, and at Queen's University Belfast, uh, after talking to a range of people and thinking about it, I've always sat down and uh, written a paper. Sometimes mm. the papers uh, were quite lengthy. Uh, uh, as in the case of um, uh, London Business School. Uh, sometimes uh, they were several papers, as in the case of Warwick over the years. Uh, sometimes they weren't much more than a speech at an inaugural uh, session as at Queen's. But I've always done that, and I thought it wasn't a bad way in which to communicate with academics, because academics, of course, are used to uh, mm -hmm. uh, writing papers and uh, reading papers and so on. Although in all cases, I would also give it as a lecture or something of that kind or a presentation. But uh, I think you might say that I've strategized by uh, by writing, writing first papers. of all and collecting my thoughts and mm -hmm. then beginning to uh, okay. promulgate the message. And what have you most enjoyed about your leadership roles? Enjoyed or proudest of or Whichever you know, you well to, uh, I suppose they're rather similar. I mean first of all what I enjoyed most uh, I think uh, is the way in which you can influence and develop people's careers and one of the nice things about a business school is that in a traditional university department I think um, basically uh, there's two roles, I suppose. One is being a good scholar uh, and one is being uh, perhaps a good teacher. Uh, whereas in business school, there's a much wider variety of roles and there's mm -hmm. a huge number of management roles like running the MBA and so on. And uh, it was very nice not just to influence young scholars and bring them on uh, or good teachers or whatever, but seeing people at different stages where they thought their career maybe had come to an end or they'd run into a brick wall yeah. and uh, you could move them into new positions. So I enjoyed that very much. In terms of, I suppose, what I was proud, most proud of, um, I'd break it into two. Uh, first of all, in, in the narrow sense of my career, uh, I got a tremendous amount of enjoyment out of uh, changing institutions. Uh, and uh, I think most people accept that the institutions I'm in uh, changed considerably mm -hmm. uh, during the time I was there. Not everybody agreed they changed for the better, okay. but uh, they certainly changed. And um, I took a lot of uh, satisfaction out of saying, well, I arrived, the organization was in a certain amount of uh, difficulty. When I left, it was perhaps in less difficulty. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge enjoyment. When I look back on my professional career, uh, the thing I'm most proud of is actually some of the things I've done outside of business schools. And I think in my own field of industrial relations, helping to bring in the national minimum wage, um, which uh, we did over a decade ago. Uh, I was one of several people that did that. but. Mm -hmm. um, probably uh, the most significant thing was having a national minimum wage. Yeah. And you survive on about four hours sleep a night? How, 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 well, I how can survive on four hours sleep a night, and uh, I can survive on it for quite a long time, four or five hours. And mm -hmm. uh, as a youngster, I was in the Navy, uh, and the uh, Navy has a watch system, uh, four hours on, four hours off. And I don't know if it was that. I think it may also have been my father, who was uh, a manual worker. and. Uh, 
Uh, my mother was very keen I would play the piano and I agreed to take lessons on the grounds that uh, I could still go out with the boys after school and she said fine your dad will wake you when he goes out to work at the Canadian Pacific Railway every morning uh, and dad would leave the house at about six and I would get up and do my hours practice then okay. so I've always been an early riser and uh, I can get along for a long time without too much sleep. Right okay and uh, you, you won a case award for fundraising. Any views on fundraising? Well, I think fundraising these days is absolutely central to the job of a vice chancellor or university president or the dean of a business school. Mm. Uh, I just don't think that uh, we can any longer, if we could, assume that the state is going to provide all the money that's necessary. Okay. And uh, I think it's also tremendously important to have a plurality of funding. I mean, we've had a real arrogance, I think, in the UK that mm -hmm. somehow we were superior to American universities because the state funded us. We now find of course that the state is not going to fund us. We also find that of course that the state can be an even more oppressive funder and dictator of terms yep. than a whole plurality of private funders. So I think fundraising is essential. Okay, two last questions. How do you run meetings? Well, I run meetings in a very structured way uh, and um, I uh, am a very forceful chairman and I usually warn people when I start, unless they know me well, mm -hmm. that I'm going to push and push and push because I, uh, I have uh, a set time for a meeting uh, in universities usually one meeting ends and another one stops right. so you can't let them run over. So I'm very forceful and what I'm always trying to do is pull out and I do a lot of, I list, did a lot of arbitrations and mediation, same thing. People are talking and you try and capture a point mm -hmm. and hold on to it and say, right, that's a good point. So that when you finally get to the end of the discussion, you can say, well, I think there are three things here that are really essential. You pull them out, some of them, and see if people agree. Right. And finally, how do you deal with university heads of administration? And registrars? Yeah. Well, I try and pe uh, treat them uh, as uh, partners rather than enemies, uh, realizing that their job is different than mine and uh, mine from theirs. Uh, but if you're going to get anything done, uh, you need to form a partnership. And uh, I've been very lucky uh, both at Warwick, where uh, I worked with uh, Mike Shattuck, who uh, is a pretty legendary uh, registrar, perhaps the registrar of his uh, generation. Uh, and we wouldn't have achieved uh, what we achieved at Warwick if it hadn't been for uh, Mike, there's no question about that. And equally when I became a Vice Chancellor at uh, Queen's, uh, I worked uh, with the registrar there who's still there, James O'Kane, uh, similarly. And again at LBS, uh, Jerry Quincy was the registrar or secretary. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I find it absolutely essential and again people see a kind of us and them and there is an us and them uh, but these people at best are opponents not enemies and uh, if you can make a partnership it's much stronger than making an enemy. Okay, excellent, thank you.